everyone, welcome back to our community. If you're new, I'm Jen. I try out wellness experiences and workout classes around New York City. And I'm a running hater who randomly decided to train for a half marathon and dare I say now likes running. So I'm giving away all my tips on how I'm training for a half marathon, literally from couch to half marathon. Went from absolutely never running, hating running, couldn't even run more than a one mile my entire life to now the longest run I've done is 10 miles three times and I loved it. So here's how I got there. We're gonna start with my workout split. We're gonna get into like the nitty gritty details of what I'm actually doing and what my actual plan is. So I gave myself six months to start running. I didn't sign up for a half marathon until I wanna say five months out. But the first month of running, the goal was just, I wanna become a capable runner. I wanna be able to run 5K or five miles and be totally cool with it and not throwing an absolute tantrum like I did on my first six mile run with Ethan. I want a document, so just wouldn't have this long here. Okay. I like, I'm giving myself a panic attack. I just finished the loop around Central Park. And I'm proud of myself, but also like embarrassed that I cried with only like 10 minutes left. So I did a couple different things when it comes to coming up with my own training plan. In addition to watching videos like this, it is super, super overwhelming. So I found that following a plan on an app really, really helped me because you could still personalize it in your own time but at least you have a guide that you find either online or in an app that you can follow. And what I wanna mention is in addition to having the plan on my Nike Run Club app, they also had guided runs. So every single run I did, I felt like I had a coach with me and I wasn't going in blind. And that is what allowed me to really learn and understand form during my run. So they felt super productive and I felt like I was learning how to properly run because it's kind of an individual sport if you don't hire a coach or go to a run club. So you wanna make sure you're really learning the posture along the way. That's especially important when it comes to not getting injured. So before we break down the actual split that I did every single week leading up to the half marathon that's two weeks away, I'm letting you in on something that you really, really need to know, especially if you are a woman watching this video. And especially if you are entirely new to working out. So the first thing I do after a run before I even stretch is jump in the shower and take care of my business down there. So this is like the biggest pro tip ever. I've been using my Love Wellness Peach Balancing Cleanser. So this is the biggest girl hack of all time, let me tell you. <laughs> Love Wellness creates safer and more effective women's health products than any other brand on the market. So all of Love Wellness products are created without toxic skin irritants, fragrances, none of that shit. And when you're using products down there, I can't tell you how many people use like fragrance products. Like it's not supposed to smell like a flower down there, okay? We need fragrance-free pH balancing cleanser. And let me just tell you, ever since I started using this three and a half years ago, maybe even longer, I have not gotten one infection. I have been like fully healthy down there. It literally changed my life. When I first started working out a ton, I was getting a bunch of infections and getting irritated and this saved my life. So I am so excited that they are sponsoring this portion of today's video. It's a fragrance-free gentle cleanser for your vulva. It's an OBGYN approved cleanser that doesn't disrupt vaginal flora or pH levels. It won't irritate sensitive skin. Their cleanser matches acidic vaginal pH levels and it's for external use only. So you can get 15% off with code GEN15 on lovewellness.com. I will put the link and everything in the description description below, but seriously, trust me on this, guys, on your running journey. I'm going to help a girl out. Let me just say that. Okay, so let's get into the training split. We did two days of strength training, four days of running, and one rest day every single week. Did I hit that perfectly every single week? Absolutely not, but that was my plan. And I loved the structure around it. I think that's one of my favorite things about running, and I will do an entirely different video on everything you'll gain from your running journey, but I just loved this fitness structure, this routine that I had to follow to reach my goal. I think fitness can be so confusing. What class do I do today? I don't know, I used to just get like a little overwhelmed, but I loved having this structure and a certain goal and a date where I actually have to complete this goal by because I signed up for a date that scares me. If you're interested in hearing more of that, head over to my podcast, Dare to Self Care with Grace Lee. We spoke all about it. So within those four days of running every single week, we hit four different kinds of runs. There's a speed run, there's hill repeats, there's recovery runs, and then there's your long run. So most weeks you're doing mostly recovery runs, but 
some form of all those runs every single week and a long run every single week and a rest day every single week. So let's visualize this. What is a speed run? This is something I felt like I had to Google a million different things on my journey, but I'm just laying it all out for you now. A speed run is interval workouts to help you build speed. So instead of being like, okay, go out there and run six miles super, super fast, that's not sustainable. Instead, it's gonna be interval. So run one minute at your fastest pace. Now walk for 20 seconds. Run 30 seconds at your 5K speed and then walk for five minutes. Like whatever the intervals are, it's to get your body used to running faster, but in shorter, more realistic increments. And then you'll see it come into fruition in your longer runs as you do more of them. And as time goes on, your speed will get faster in general in all runs. So these speed runs are usually under 30 minutes because you're exerting so much speed and effort. And then there's hill repeats, which is gonna be more important if you're doing a course, which we can talk about later on, that's gonna be more of a hillier, like a more of a half marathon with more hills and that's not as flat. These are gonna be really important to get your body adjusted. So you're gonna run up the hill fast and then recover as you go down the hill. Over and over and over again, usually like 10 times I would say. So physically training on hills can build muscle strength and then hill sprints or hill repeats can really help improve your running form and technique, which translates into less energy expended on your longer runs. Recovery runs are essentially what you would think from the name of them. These are gonna be your easier runs where you you just run super light and don't worry about speed. So it's gonna be a very light and controlled efforts. I like to think of posture during these runs. Typically you're gonna do these runs when your legs are super tired from the training that you've been doing. So if you follow a training plan, you'll notice recovery runs are gonna come closer to your speed runs and your long runs. Like closely after those they'll follow. So you wanna follow a plan because it's super intentional. So these runs are gonna be easy enough not to give you any muscle damage or injury, but still easy enough also for that extra extra recovery. So you move your body, but you're not expending too much energy or effort or putting too much damage on your muscles. And then long runs, again, self-explanatory. These are runs that are based on distance goals. So it'll be in your half marathon, a long run could start at three miles in the beginning of your journey and end at your last one being anywhere from 10 to 12. My most I'm doing is 10, but I know on certain apps, it'll say 12.5, but I think it's generally understood that if you can run 10, you can run the 13.1, especially with that extra adrenaline and excitement you're gonna get from race day. I was planning on doing 12.5, but I ended up getting sick. I'm a little snuffly, snuff, sniffly right now, so I ended up getting sick and missing that long, long run of 12 miles, and now it's too close to the race, so I'm capping it at 10, but I know I'll be okay. So that's another just way to look at it of like, you wanna make sure you're personalizing your runs. If you know that your body needs a break and you can't handle a speed run today, skip the speed run. You don't have to kill yourself following every single plan to a T, but it's really important to follow one because the people who make these plans know more than we do and they're intentional. Okay, so now that we have an understanding of what all the different types of runs are, let's take a look at my specific training schedule. So I mentioned Grace Lee before she was on my podcast. She really helped me tailor my schedule more to my fitness goals. So my goal for the marathon, it wasn't a pace. If yours is a pace, you might have more speed runs. It just might look a little different. Mine, and I'm assuming yours, if you are watching this video, was just to be able to do it without stopping, without feeling like I was dying and just do it and feel strong. I didn't really care about like running it super fast for my first half marathon ever. My goal was just to prove to something that I could do something I always said I couldn't do. So running 10 miles like I did, I don't really care what pace I did it at. I'm just happy that I was able to run 10 freaking miles. So Grace actually made me my own tailored schedule. I'll show you what that looked like and the split that I had been doing weekly. And she linked it out to a bunch of different guided runs on the app, like I mentioned before, which I can do a whole separate video on that app review, and I will. But let's just take a glance at what my schedule looked like. So you can maybe tailor your own schedule a similar way. So as you can see here, I did a 12 week plan with Grace and that is about three months. So I had a couple of months before that where I was just kind of learning to run on my own. I had been following the half marathon plan on the Nike Run Club app just because I wanted something to follow, but I wasn't you know, doing a really strategic split, if that makes sense. So I had 12 weeks where I was really determined to hit all of these runs, unless I was injured or feeling sick or something like that, of course. But as you can see here, week one was my recovery three miles, a speed workout, and then strength training or a class, a few recovery runs, long run rest. And then let's take a look at like week eight, recovery run on Monday, speed run on Tuesday, 
strength training Wednesday, recovery. My recovery runs start getting longer here. You can see eight mile recovery run on week eight, class on Friday, long run on Saturday, rest on Sunday. I always did my rest days on Sunday and my Saturdays long run days because you don't want to you want to have plenty of time for your long run days. You don't want to like squeeze it in before work. So a lot of people do that Saturday run day, Sunday rest day. And then just taking a look at the last few weeks that I'm in right now leading up to half marathon training. Unfortunately, you see peak week. I was sick, so I totally missed that train. I did not do any of this peak week stuff that I was supposed to do, unfortunately. But let's just take a look at what that looks like. That's like the last week where you're going hard before you taper out. Tapering is what you do a few weeks leading up to race week. And the purpose of that is you wanna run on really fresh legs. You don't wanna be fatigued or sore, so you kinda of taper off. So peak week started with a 40 minute recovery run, hill repeats, a class, seven mile recovery run, a class, and then that 12 mile run, like I said, I missed. So then this is where we are. You see the last few weeks increased protein and don't do strength training. And I would just say the reason for that is like I said, you don't wanna be sore or, fat or have muscle fatigue. You wanna feel really fresh. So it's really just a bunch of recovery runs and one long run for the next couple of weeks. And that's really it. So that's my plan. And then just a few tips when it comes to creating your split and your workout plan when it comes to your half marathon on training plan as a running newbie. Few tips that helped me. Number one, have someone take a look at the course you're gonna be running to look at the elevation map. Literally look up, I looked up Philadelphia Half Marathon Elevation Map. They'll be able to tell you, someone who knows more than you who runs like marathons and races, They'll be able to let you know if it's a super hilly course or not, and that way you can kind of adjust your how, how often you wanna do hill repeats accordingly. And then number two is especially helpful if you don't have someone from tip number one to consult, join a run club. Running is such a community. It feels like such an individual sport at first, but if you can find a run club where you go even just once a week and have a community of people to learn from, to feel support from, to train with, to connect with, people who are in your same boat, people people you can learn from who can help you with tips from their bad races and good races and everything that helped them in between. It's such an exciting time to train for something because there's so many people around the world training for the same thing. There's such a community around it. There's such a, such a structure around it. There's so much to learn and you can learn so much through other people in the community. My last tip is get inspiration from Run Talk. Get on running TikTok. Start searching all these running videos and your TikTok algorithm will adjust and you'll get so inspired and I'll just kind of glorify running for you and it helps make your runs a little more exciting. So I can make a ton more videos on this, supplements I took, mindset tips, how to actually start enjoying running, and any other questions you guys have, just comment them down below. Give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful. I will include that discount to Love Wellness in the description below. And I love you all so much. Mwah.